Hey guys, I'm JD and welcome back to the Dimensions Woodworks Woodshop. Today we've got a really simple DIY project that is going to be relatively inexpensive and add a ton of curb appeal to your home. We're going to be replacing our old mailbox post with a new custom built cedar mailbox post and while we're at it, we're going to tack on a new mailbox as well. Let's get started. So we start out with our old mailbox. It's not in the worst condition I've ever seen, but also not the greatest. So then we take our ideas to the drawing board. So the post office has regulations listed online for the requirements for your mailbox. Here it requires our box post to be at least 20 inches into the ground so I take that into account in my measurements for my original drawings but make sure you check your local regulations to ensure that you are following all state and federal guidelines. After getting all the measurements and the rough plans drawn out I begin to lay out the marks where I will make my cuts on my actual work pieces. Then we will take the beam to the miter saw and make two cuts, one for the main post and one for the post that will support the mailbox itself. There are a few ways that you could choose to join these two pieces of wood together, but I chose to do a mortise and tenon so that I would have a good strong connection there. And here you'll see me lay out my mortise and tenon joint and begin to make the cuts for the tenon. The key to attaining a good mortise and tenon joint is all in the layout. Make sure that the setup is really dialed in exactly where you want it before beginning to make your cuts. Now that we have our tenon cut, we can begin the layout of the opposing mortise on the main post. I always make sure to lay out my waist area when making mortise and tenon joints just to avoid any confusion. Then I get my spiral upcut bit and my plunge router and I set the depth of the mortise by using the tenon itself. I take care to cut close to the line with the router so that I can come back with a chisel and mallet and really dial in that cut. Now that we have two of the main components knocked out, we can turn our attention to the support piece that will be 45 on either end. And with all three of our major pieces cut and laid out, we can begin the glue up process. After applying liberal amounts of glue to the mortise side of the joint, we inset the tenon. I put a clamp on it and then check for square with an engineer square. To join the support brace with the 45 degree cuts on either end, I chose to use dowels. I've used this method quite extensively in the past. You just drill the first hole, set the divots in place, and then whack it a couple of times with a hammer. That leaves you an indentation in the opposing piece of wood where you can then drill the opposite holes for the dowels to go. Then we apply glue to both contact surfaces 
on the cross member as well as where that piece will hit the main post and then I go ahead and put the dowels in place and then work that piece into position. I had to drill these holes at somewhat of an angle to allow the dowels to enter the holes freely. Then work in one side, then the other. Then I clamped it all into place and allowed the glue to cure for quite some time. Then it was time to attach the board that the mailbox itself would actually screw into. I chose another piece of cedar for this application and then just used screws to screw it directly down to the top of the main post. I took a little bit of time to ensure that the mailbox platform was aligned properly in the center of the post and that also the door would open and close freely without any obstruction. Then it was time to add some finish. For this project I chose spar urethane because it has very good water resistant properties. Also, the species I chose for this build, the cedar, is also our preferred wood of choice um, for outdoor builds because already it has a good bit of water resistance built in, but then bugs also don't like to eat the species of wood where I live. There are very few that will actually eat cedar. So when applying your outdoor finish, just make sure to take your time to give it a nice even coat. And typically I've found with spar urethane that a couple of coats will give you more than enough protection for what you need. And another added bonus of using the clear coat is it just really brings out all the characteristics in the wood. You can see that platform piece of cedar up top and then the post itself, it really makes the grain pop in the project. Once the finish had been applied and had time to cure, I came back and gave myself that 20 inch mark that is how far the post will be set into the ground. Then it was time to get the old post out of the way so that I can now set the brand new mailbox post. Luckily whoever set this post before I got here did not put concrete in the base and I really don't think that it's necessary although that is an option if you want to make sure that your post doesn't go anywhere. I just reset the new post back in the old hole and used a little bit of the free dirt to kind of tamp down around the edges of the post. I would put a little dirt and then add a little bit of water to allow that dirt to settle. Then tamp the end with my shovel to make sure that it was nice and secure and checking against the level along the way. You can see the level here on top of the platform where the mailbox will be mounted, but I also checked the level from side to side as well whenever I was setting the post itself. And here you see the tamping process that I spoke of earlier, just using the end of the shovel to tamp the dirt around the post. It wasn't filmed earlier, but I did this all along the way. Now it's time to set the new mailbox in place. It is attached to the post by eight screws that just screw into the side of that platform that I added. I made sure the thickness of the piece of wood on the top was the same as the distance between the bottom of the mailbox and these side screws.
I also decided to add this custom decal to the side of the box itself. You can order them with your last name as well as your address and I think it just helps to kick the project up a notch. And another part of this project was making the mailbox match our new red door. Thanks so much for watching y'all. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell icon so that you can be notified when we release new content. You can check out more projects over at dimensionswoodworks.com and keep up with what I'm doing daily in the shop over at my Instagram, which will both be linked down in the description. And until next time, guys, don't forget to get better every day.